Hey, what's up? My name is Norris, and today I'll be doing another sew along to one of my latest patterns for the new brand, Know Me, created by my wife, Mimi G Style, in her new role as VP. Now, before I get started, I want to highlight a few of the other menswear patterns that came out in this season. Um, we're gonna start with Julian. His pattern number is ME2009. He has a sweater and a nice pair of pants. And then we have Senza Mini, which is Scorpio, and he has a dope bummer jacket and his number is ME2010. And if you haven't been following me close enough, you know that I have my other pattern, which is a moto jacket, and it's ME2011. Now, if you're new to sewing, I just need a refresh course. You can click the Sewing Basics video that's linked in the description box below. Now, if you need more instructions than that, because this is not a learn to sew video, I would advise you to check out sewtocamming.com, and when you sign up for the free trial, you get the first five courses for free, okay? Let's get started. Okay, once again, we're gonna be using my latest Nomi pattern, which is ME2012, and it's a jumpsuit. So we turn around to this side here. Um, the fabric suggested, um, you can use a canvas, a denim, a chino, a cotton blend. You could also use a stretch woven as well. So you have a pretty variety of fabrics that you can use. Um, you're also gonna need lightweight interfacing. So when it comes to notions, you're gonna need one, 18 inch zipper, um, you could be a little bit longer, we could just cut the ends off. And also you're gonna need at least five eighths of an inch yards of elastic, okay? A one inch thick elastic. And then also you're gonna need two five eighths of an inch snaps. Now these are the snaps I'm gonna be using right here. Now this is the top, and then this right here is the bottom. And then these are the tools that I'm gonna use. Now in my opinion, like these tools right here are some of the easiest ways to put on a snap. You have an indention right here that is smooth, which is for hammering down the top here. It lays flat into that. And then the other side here, it has a little groove in the middle and it's for this side here for the bottom, okay? Now I'll show you how to put one snap in a little bit later when we get to that step into the order of construction. And then also, um, like I always say, when it comes to finding out your size, um, you want to come down here to finish garment measurements and, and you want your size to be somewhere around the sizes that you see right here. So because you want ease to be in your garment so you can have movement and all that stuff, I wouldn't have it too close to your sizes. You do want that little added room. And then once you find the one that's, that's gonna fit comfortable, you want to go up and then that's what size you will cut out. All right, so now we're going to go through all the pattern pieces. Okay, so first we have pattern piece number 14. Now this is the upper facing. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric and two out of interfacing. And then there are two markings right here that says four left side. So on the left side, and basically we demonstrate what the left side looks like. Okay, so this right here is the left side. So this right here is the wrong side. If the wrong side, of the fabric is facing so the wrong so if you have the upper facing wrong side facing up and it has the same shape like this this is the left i'm um, facing okay so on this side here you'll be putting those two markings okay next we have our collar you want to cut two of these out of fabric and then one out of interfacing and the two that we cut out will be cut out on the fold right here Next we have pattern piece number four, which is the back yoke. You wanna cut one on the fold and the fold is right here. Pattern piece number six, this is the back casing. You wanna cut two of these out on the fold and the fold is right here. Pattern piece number five, this is the front casing. You wanna cut four of these out of fabric. Pattern piece number 15, this is the lower facing. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric and two out of interfacing. Pattern piece number two, this is the pocket. You wanna cut three of these out of fabric. Pattern piece number nine, this is the pocket facing. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric. Now with the fabric that you cut out of this, it can be a lighter weight um, for it because this will be the pocket bag that we will not see. So um, I have a lining piece that's just a little bit thinner than my actual fabric, okay? I just want to note that. Pattern piece number 10, pants side front. Um, you wanna cut two of these out of your main fabric. 
Next is pattern piece number 12. This is a guide for the elastic, so don't cut anything out of this. You just want to lay it flat and then put your elastic up to it and cut it out the same length. Pattern piece number three, this is the bodice back. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. Pattern piece number one, this is the bodice front. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. And then note the two markings that we have here is for the patch pocket that goes on the left side, okay? And then up here, we have for right side, and then this says for right side. Now these are the two markings right here that we're going to put for our snaps. But I don't like to put markings on the bottom because I like to fold over the top and I want it to be exactly where I end up because sometimes you might not be exactly where these markings are. Through the whole process of construction and then your fabric might shift just maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, so I would probably wait to do that, but we do have those markings. Pattern piece number 16, now this is the sleeve. Now there is a lengthening and shortening line here. Now you can, you can cut it and make it shorter and then you would just have to grade in that side to make it smooth on the side of the sleeves or you can add. So what I did was I slashed and I spread it and I put fabric up under it and I put paper up under it to make my sleeves just a little bit longer. I want my sleeves to come about right here, you know what I'm saying? So you do, you definitely want to measure out and then see what that sleeve length is. And then also right here on the sleeve, you see the different sizes right here for that length. So once you find that out, um, you will cut two of these out of fabric. Next we have pattern piece number eight. Now this is the pant front left. Now your left side will be basically like this. This is my left. But when we work on it, we're probably gonna be having it this way just so we can see it on um, right side up and front facing me for filming purposes. So this right here is the left side. You're only gonna cut one of these out of your fabric. Next we have pattern piece number seven. This is the right pants front. Now, as you can see right here, it's on the left side right here, but this is the right. And we're gonna cut one of these out of our fabric. And last but not least, we have pattern piece number 11. This is the pant back. Um, don't forget your two markers here for your back pockets, and we're gonna cut two of these out of fabric. Okay, so once we have all of our pattern pieces cut out of fabric and have the proper pieces interface, we can begin order of construction. Okay, so let's hop right into it. Um, this right here is our patch pocket. We have three of them. We will be using one on our left side of our front bias, and then for the pants back, the other two will go on there. So um, what I wanna do first, the very top of the pocket, you want to fold that down a quarter inch, give it a good press. And then once you give that a good press, there's a fold line. I put a notch on both sides so I know that it's gonna be even. So I'm gonna flip this around. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fold that down where that fold line is. And if you need to, you can just pin on both sides. And then head to the machine and we're going to stitch starting on one side where that fold is using five eight seven eight seam allowance all the way down, pivoting at every corner and then up the other side. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that I'm back from the machine, as you can see, we have this top stitched down. So what I like to do is, I like to just get some of that corner right there. And then I just cut this little piece off. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this right side out. Okay, so now that the corners are poked out and we have that quarter inch fold underneath, like this, we want to press right where we have that stitching is all the way down across the bottom and then the other side. Give that a good press along with the top. And then once it's pressed really nicely, we want to come and top stitch right at the top, making sure that we catch that fold underneath, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, now that we're back from the machine and pressing table, you can see that it's top stitched across the top and then I have all the seam allowance pressed um, in like this, okay? So then once you have it like this, you wanna find your pocket placements, the two markings that are on the front of the left side only. And we're just going to line that up just like that. And then we're gonna pin. Okay, so we're just gonna to head to the machine. We're gonna edge stitch starting here 
all the way across the bottom and then up the other side. And then we're going to do a second top stitch, which is going to be a quarter inch away from that first one all the way around. OK, so do that. Come back and we'll continue. OK, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, I went ahead and top stitch um, my patch pocket on my left side of my front bias. And then you want to do the other pockets the same exact way, um, one on each um, back piece. Now we're going to work on our back two back bodices and this is how it looks. So we're right sides facing. We're going to put them together. There should be three notches indicating the back. I'm just going to put a couple of pins in here just to keep it in place while I sew. Okay, so the head to the machine. We're going to stitch down using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine and pressing table and I went ahead and I surged both of the seam allowances together and I pushed them to the right um, and I pressed. Okay, I pressed it to one side. And then on the right side, I went ahead and edge stitched close to that seam allowance and then I did a second row of stitching a quarter inch away from there. Now I want you to get used to the double top stitching, one to the edge and one a quarter inch away from that first one um, because that's the design of this particular pattern, okay? So next I'm gonna go ahead and take the back yoke and we're right sides facing. I'm going to pin it to the top. There's a set of two notches on both sides that you want to make sure you line up. Okay, so to just head to the machine, we're going to do the exact same thing. Just a easy straight stitch starting here all the way across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then after we do that, you can surge that seam if you want to, but I'll be pressing it up like this. And we're going to be doing the two rows of stitching here. The first stitch it's going to be an edge stitch, and then the second one is going to be a top stitch a quarter inch away from that one, the same way we did here. Okay, so do all of that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine, and as you can see, I went ahead and I pressed my seam allowance up after I searched the ends, and then I edge stitched close to that seam, but on my yoke, and then I did a second row of top stitching a quarter inch away from that one. So now we're going to add our front biases and we're going to pin at the shoulders. There's a notch on the shoulder and just so you know. Okay, nice and easy. I'm just going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch across both shoulders using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I went ahead and pressed those seam allowance right here open and as you can see I surged on both sides, on both seam allowances. And next what we're going to do, I'm going to lay this flat and we're going to put in our sleeve okay so this right here is the back and this is the front so we need one notch in the back in the front and then a double notch in the back and that's how we line up our sleeves so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and pin there's a notch to match up where that yoke seam is okay so now we're just going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch across that sleeve using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to surge both of these together and then I'm going to press my seam allowance towards the front bodice and not the sleeve. Okay, so do that, come back and we'll continue. And you want to pin and sew the other side the same exact way. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. As you can see, I went ahead and attached um, both of our sleeves. I went ahead and pressed my seams towards um, the top bodice and then I top stitched here like I was telling you and then we're right sides facing We're just going to we're gonna match up all of our notches And then we're gonna pin under the armhole making sure that seam is matched up and then down to this the hem of our sleeve All right, so go ahead and pin Okay, so like I said, we're going to start on one end and we're going to stitch all the way down to the other end using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, you want to pin and sew your other um, side the same exact way and we're going to press our seams open. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and finished up under my armhole like this, as you can see. And then I went ahead and I pressed that seam open. And then now we're going to work on our casings for right now. So the back casing is on the fold, as you can see right here. And then we have the notches on top and then these right here is our front casings okay so with all the notches to the top 
you want to pin those at those side notches right here just connecting the two front ones to the sides right sides facing okay and you want to stitch five eighths of an inch here and then also here and then you want to grab the other set because we did two of these and then we cut four of the front so you want to do that the same exact way come back and we'll continue okay so i'm back from the machine as you can see i have my two seams pressed open here and then now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the front bodice and i'm going to pin it to the front okay we're right sides facing all right so there should be two notches here and then also we should match up that seam too but before i do that this right here is the other set now this one right here is going to be used as a facing so what i did was i took the unnotched edge and i pressed it a half inch and then i'm just going to trim that down a little bit So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich the front bodice in between the front and between the casing and then the facing that looks just like the casing. OK, it's only the facing because it's on the inside. I'm going to put the right side to the wrong side underneath. And then we have the right sides together for the casing on top. OK, so I'm just going to pin all three of these together. If it's better for you to go ahead and base the, the casing on the front first and then come back and then um, stitch the facing on, you can do that. But I'm, I like to do all of mine in one take. So we have the casing, this right size facing with the bodice, and then we have the facing that looks just like the casing with a half inch pressed up the opposite side of the notch side and then we trimmed it down a little bit and then we have the right side of the facing to the wrong side of the bias and then we're going to just start on one side stitch all the way down to the other side using five eighths of an inch seam allowance we're going to stitch through all thicknesses so come back and we'll continue okay so we're back from the machine and as you can see right here we have our casing here then we have our facing right here okay you see what we turn under and pressed and after I did that I pressed everything down and then on the right side I add stitch close to that seam and then also I top stitch a quarter inch away from there okay so this is what we have now so for right now we're just going to put this to the side and then we're going to work on our collar so the collar with the interfacing, we went ahead and um, I went ahead and did a basing stitch from small dot to small dot here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to that dot, press this up five eighths of an inch where that stitch is, and then I'm going to give that a really good press. And then after I press it, I'm going to trim it down to about three eighths of an inch. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so after I press and trim that seam allowance down here, I'm going to go ahead and place it on the other one, right size facing, and we're going to pin. Okay, and then I have it pinned. We're gonna start on one side, and we're gonna stitch, pivoting at the corners, and then down the other side. You wanna do that using a five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and trim my corners. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and turn everything right side out and point out your corners. Okay, so go ahead and give this a good press. You want to keep it just like that and just give that a good press. So do that, come back and we'll continue and attach it to our bodice. Okay, so I'm back from the pressing table. As you can see, I pressed it really well. And then we just have this right here. So now I'm going to pin this down to the neckline. There should be a notch right there. I'm not pinning the top interface part, only the one that's touching the neckline. Okay, I am pinning down this end though. 
but everything that I turn under, you want to keep that free. Okay, so now we're just going to base this down. We're going to start on this end here and using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're just going to go all the way across, leaving this inside part free. And then we're going to end on this side. Okay, so do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we have our collar based onto our bodice at the neckline. And then now we're going to move along to our pants real quick. You want to grab the right pant leg and there should be a large dot right here so you just want to reinforce where that dot is about an inch above and an inch under and then now we're going to take our pocket bag and we're going to line it up with that notch and then also add our dots okay so we're going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch from the dot to the other dot we're not going to go to the end we're not going to go to the end of here just dot to dot using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I back stitched at the beginning also at the end. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a clip right to where that dot is, where I stop in my stitching. And then now before I turn it all the way over, I'm going to do a little under stitching. So right where that dot was at, I'm going to back stitch and I'm going to add stitch on the left side here and all of my seam allowance is going to be facing the left okay so just basically under stitch from dot to dot and then come back and we'll continue okay so once I did my under stitching I turned my pocket back to the inside just like this and then I folded out that little cutout at the top and then also right here and then also I went ahead and I edge stitch close to that edge right there. But I started it down here, okay? And I just went all the way up, all the way to the end of the fabric. And then a quarter inch away from that one, I went and started down here. And then I went all the way up into um, the waist. And then now we're gonna grab our side front. And then we're just gonna match it up. There should be a dot indicating where we place it and I'm going to pin it in the front just going to pin it real quick I'm just going to pin it right here and then I'm going to flip it around and then now I'm going to match up the edges okay so I'm going to pin we're going to be stitching and keeping this right here free the pant leg free and then just only stitching the seam allowance on the pockets okay so we're going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch around this curve here and ending on this side using 5 8 7 inch seam allowance and then I'm going to turn it to the front and I'm going to baste the top of this and I'm going to base it to the side okay so you want to do your left front piece the same exact way with your pocket so do everything you, you just see me do here but do it for the other side okay as you can see I'm back from the machine and I went ahead and search the edge of that pocket and then base down here and then across here and then now we have a nice clean finished um, pattern and I did the other side the same exact way so now I'm gonna put one to the side and then I'm gonna grab one of my back pieces and with the right sides facing, I'm going to line up the inseam, face it this way, and then we're going to pin along the inseam and start pinning where our notch is at first. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go to the machine. I'm gonna stitch from the hem all the way up to the crotch area using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? And then after that, you wanna grab your other front and your other back and stitch along that inseam the same exact way, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and stitched the back and the front in the side seam right here on both sides. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay them together, right sides facing, and we're going to pin them in the center and then there should be some notches indicating what the back is three notches here and then on the front here there should be a notch here 
And then we're going to pin at that large dot. It should be a large dot right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the machine. We're going to start in the back. We're going to stitch all the way until we get here through the seam. And then we're going to stop and back stitch at that dot. Okay, so do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now we back from the machine and I went ahead and press that seam open right here. Where we add it and then now I'm going to pin on that outside seam and we're going to stitch them down using five eighths of an inch. So let me go ahead and pin this. Okay, so now we're gonna head to the machine, like I said, and stitch all the way down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to do the other leg the same exact way. Okay, so I'm back from the machine and also pressing table. I went ahead and press that outside seam. As you can see right here, press that seam open. And then now we're going to attach the bodice to the legs. So basically, we're right sides facing. We're gonna take the bottom of the casing and we're going to pin it to the top of the pants. So you should match up the seams, both side seams. Okay, so now that we have it pinned all the way along here, we want to start on one side and we're going to stitch all the way to the other side here. And we're gonna keep that facing open like this, and you wanna pull it back so we won't catch it. And we're gonna stitch that down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine, and I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance up, and I trimmed my seam allowance a little bit here. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take that facing, and we're going to put it just over that seam allowance. And then on the right side, I'm gonna pin, okay? So pin it in place, and I'm just gonna do that all the way down, and we're going to edge stitch and then top stitch the same way we did this side here, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I have the facing on the inside pin all the way down, it's gonna create a casing once we stitch. So I'm going to head to the machine where we have the pins on the right side, and we're going to add stitch all the way till we get to the other side, and then we're gonna do a second row of stitches a quarter inch away from that one, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so now I'm going to add stitch all the way here, you want to back it at the beginning and also at the end. And then now you want to continue to stitch all the way to the end. And then also when you get done, you want to do a second row of stitches a quarter inch away from that one. So finish doing that and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back for the machine. And as you can see right here, we closed off the inside by top stitching right here on the edge and then a quarter inch away from there. And then now we're gonna grab our one inch elastic and we're going to push it through, through one side and then out the other side. So let's go ahead and push that through. Okay, now I'm just gonna head to the machine. I'm just gonna tack it down here and then you wanna tack it down on this side as well, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine, and as you can see, we have it tacked down, and then we have a nice casing. Now this don't supposed to be a tight pull, it's just supposed to be just a little bit, so don't be alarmed if it's not like hugging your, your waist, because it don't supposed to do all that. Okay, so now we're gonna move along to our front facing up here. So this right here is the left, facing because it matches up to the left side you know what I'm saying just like that but first what we're gonna do is we have two dots here for our snaps so you want to grab this snap right here and you want this the right side of the snap to be on the inside because these are going to be hidden snaps okay you won't see them on this side 
okay? But we're gonna also head to the machine on the unnotched side. We're gonna press the seam allowance. And then once we press the seam allowance, I'm just gonna tuck in that raw edge there, okay? And then I'm going to top stitch on here, catching that fold underneath. And then after we do that, when it's folded, we're going to press up the seam allowance on the bottom and we're gonna trim it down to a quarter inch. So do all of that, come back and we'll continue. But while I have you now, I will demonstrate one of the snaps. Okay, so I like to take my seam ripper and just make a little hole. And then once I have it here, you wanna make sure we're on the side that's smooth and not the one with the indention. And then we're gonna take this tool here and then we're gonna hammer this down. Okay, there you have it. And you wanna do the other one the same exact way. Now go ahead and press here and then press here and come back, we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back. I went ahead and put both of my snaps in and then I finished this side here, the unnotched side, and then I turned up my seam allowance. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just trim that down to a quarter inch. Okay, so now I'm gonna match up my notch. Then I'm gonna put my facing here. And I'm just gonna pin it. Okay, we're gonna keep that fold turned up at the bottom. So we're just gonna base this down right here and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I went ahead and based down the upper facing here. And this, this is lower facing. Now, there's a notch right here that we're supposed to match up right here. But we, before we do that, we want to finish off the unnotched side the same exact way we did up here. So we're just gonna press that seam allowance, which is five eighths of an inch. And we're gonna take that raw edge and tuck it under. So we have a clean finish. And then on this side here, we're going to top stitch casing that close, okay? So you wanna do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now we're back from the machine. You can see I've cleaned off this side here the same way I did right here at the upper facing. And then now we're gonna pin first at that notch. And then this right here should overlap I'm gonna pin right here. Okay, so now that we have this pinned, we messed up those the, the large dot right here. So basically what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a regular stitch all the way down until we get to the large dot using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so do that, come back and we'll continue. We're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so we're back from the machine. We went ahead and stitched all the way down using five eighths of an inch. And make sure you back stitch really good right here to reinforce that big dot. And then next we're gonna grab our zipper and we're gonna face our zipper down. And then for our lower facing here, we should have a stitching line where you see where those two darts are. If you don't have those markings, you wanna get your pattern and make sure you do that. And basically I'm just gonna take my face down zipper into the left side of the zipper tape. I'm gonna match that up with that dot all the way down, okay? And then I'm gonna pin. We're gonna stitch down. Now if you need a guide to where you stitch at for your stitching line, you can go ahead and take your pattern piece and there is a stitching line here and you just wanna match it up with that dot. And that should give you about a, right at a quarter inch away from the zipper teeth. So we can just stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down till we get to our dot. And you wanna back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle down first. And then I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. I'm 
zip this down up the way. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see right here, I understitch on the facing side, and then we turned that in like this, and we gave it a really good press. Now I'm gonna turn this right side out to make it easier to finish it up. So now there should be a dot in between the two notches here on your bias piece. So once you transfer that, you want to undo your zipper and we're going to we're going to put the top of the zipper teeth right here and line it up right where that marking is, okay? And then we're going to pin. So now we're just going to go ahead and base this in place using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and based the zipper down to the other side. And now we're going to grab our other upper and lower facing. And with right sides facing, I'm going to pin right here. And we're just going to go to the machine. We're going to st stitch this using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to press that seam open. And then after we press it open, we're going to press the seam allowance here and then tuck in that raw edge, give it a good press. And we're going to top stitch catching the fold underneath the same way we did the lower facing over here. Okay, so do all of that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. As you can see, I pressed that seam open and then I finished off the unnotched edge. And then now I'm just going to pin this to the other side, okay? So I'm just going to match up my two notches. And then now we're gonna to head to the machine and we're just going to stitch from the top all the way down to where we get to our dot. And we're gonna do that using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and stitch all the way down. But then also, I understitch. And it's kind of tricky with the zipper. You still want to put the seam allowance towards the facing, but you want your zipper um, teeth to be faced towards the front. And then you just want to stitch right there, edge stitch right there where that edge is on the facing. And then when you turn it in, you'll have it to the inside. Okay, it'll fold to the inside just a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it right side out. And then we're gonna turn the facing, right sides facing to our neckline, overlapping that collar, just like this. And then we're gonna do the other side the same exact way. Okay, this piece right here out the way the collar here that's interfaced, we're just going to start right here where that stitching is, and we're gonna stitch all the way across to the other side using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you need to cut into your neckline, you can do that now. So go ahead and do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I went ahead and did all my stitches, and then now, I'm just going to clip my corners and then trim just a little bit of that seam allowance off. And in order to get this seam allowance turned into the collar, we have to clip right where those small, small dot is. And then you have one over here too. And then we're just gonna press that seam allowance up and finish poking that corner out, okay? And then you just want to press that seam allowance all the way up like this. And I'm just gonna pin in the place for right now because we're gonna stitch in the ditch.
Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead to the machine and we're just gonna do some stitchings. So we're gonna stitch. So now we're just gonna head to the machine and we're going to do some stitching. So we're gonna stitch in the ditch to close out our collar and then we're gonna turn under that seam allowance there and we're going to top stitch right here catching the underneath. And then after you give this a good press you want to pin the rest of this down on the right side the facing and then the facing on this side and if you look at your collar you have a stitching line right here okay so you just want to follow that stitching line you can start in the back and then make your way here and then it'll stop about right here and then you just continue that line catching the facing underneath okay and then there's a pivot where you stitch right here okay so do that come back and we'll continue okay so once you do all your top stitching up here the last top stitching you have to do is along your stitching line on your left and then finish your hem and also your sleeve hem. There are patch placements for you to put on the front, um, but that is optional, like I said. And once you do all of that, we're all done. Now, I hope you enjoyed this so long and be sure to tag me on Instagram at Norris Dancer Forward and then also tag us at Know Me Patterns. All right, see you in the next one.